Hi, I want to talk about the, <coughs> the sacroiliac joint, but other people want to dig up the road outside. I'm on a very tight schedule. Uh, if I don't get it done today, it's not going to get done this week. Um, the sacroiliac joint, it's here. What I want to talk about is what is it? Where is it? What bones does it link? What sort of a joint is it? What are the movements of the joint? And then some of the clinical bits and bobs. And these guys will be going on their lunch break now, right? Um, so the sacroiliac joint is interesting because you know, people get low back pain and there are many causes of low back pain and the sacroiliac joint can be one of them. Now what is the sacroiliac joint? Sacroiliac. The sacrum is this part of the vertebral column. So here's the vertebral column. We have cervical, thoracic, lumbar and then sacral regions. The little ditty bones at the bottom there are the coccygeal ones. I spoke too soon. It's quieter though. Uh, so the sacrum is a set of five vertebral bones that have fused to form kind of like a, a wedge-shaped bone. So it's the, it's the inferior most part of the vertebral column, sacroiliac. The ilium is the flat winged bone of the pelvis. The pelvis is made up of three bones and the ilium is this big bit up here. So the sacroiliac joint is the joint between the sacrum and the ilium. And it is particularly interesting. It is a synovial joint, but there's not a lot of movement going on here. What's the purpose of this joint? Well, in us upright bipedal humans, the vertebral column is taking the load, the weight of the body weight. And if we look at the vertebral bodies, they get bigger as we descend because the bones have to take more weight. So down here, the sacrum is carrying the weight of the whole torso, the head and neck, the upper limbs and everything. And it sends it through the pelvis to the lower limbs and if you're sat down, it sends it down through these bony bits here. So the sacroiliac joint has to transfer all of this weight, all of this load out to the pelvis. It does move a little bit, not on this model. I'll show you one in a minute. Um, but maybe you can see from the articulating surfaces here that it's not like the articulating surfaces of a normal synovial joint where you make a nice hinge or a ball socket and you can move that joint easily. It's kind of a, you know, like a ridgy surface, like um, two articulating surfaces that have almost evolved to limit the amount of movement here. The anterior part of the joint we can see here is a synovial joint. So like other synovial joints in the body, the articulating surfaces are covered by articular cartilage. Uh, there's a synovial capsule holding in synovial fluid and that synovial capsule is reinforced by ligaments holding it all together. That's the anterior part. But posteriorly, this much rougher irregular part is a syndesmosis. What we mean by that is we mean it's a fibrous joint. So the two bones here are held together by connective tissues running between them, ligaments, collagen fibers. So we have a fibrous joint and a synovial joint. So we have this rather strange joint that can move a little bit, but not too much. So it's, it's evolved to allow a little bit of movement. So if we can imagine that the, the two ilia are fixed, the sacrum can then tilt a little bit anteriorly or posteriorly. This means a number of things. This means that with walking, with our bipedal gait, there is a little bit of movement allowed here, but also that the load transferred from the body is transferred to these bones effectively. Um, and also that if the weight is shock loaded here, because we've got a whole bunch of ligaments running between the bones, it's not like a suture in the skull, which wouldn't take any load, wouldn't take any stretch. This can all stretch and give a little bit and dampen those shocks and reduce the chance of injury a little bit, enough, right? And then also during pregnancy, when a baby needs to be passed through the birth canal, a little bit of laxity here makes that a little bit easier. So I said that the anterior part of the sacroiliac joint is an articular cartilage. 
it's an um, it's a synovial joint. So if I was to take the sacrum out of there, and we just look at the sacrum. Look, here's the here's the whole vertebral column. Here's the sacrum here. Confusingly, this articular cartilage part of the sacrum is called the auricular part because it looks a bit like an ear. Can you see an ear there, an ear shape? The auricular part of the joint. So if the main aim is to send load from the vertebral column out to the pelvis and out to the lower limbs, this joint must be heavily reinforced by ligaments, and it is, so we'll look at the ligaments, but also look at the shape. So if you consider that, you know a keystone in a bridge, right? You make like your humpback bridge, and the keystone is like that, and it pushes out on the arches and holds it all together. This is the opposite of that, right? It's like an upside down keystone. So it's not like a keystone that as you put more weight on it, it pushes out into the ilia. It's the opposite. So as it pushes down, the ligaments running between the sacrum and the ilium will pull the ilium in. When we see the ligaments, we'll see that the fibers are running in, in this direction and this direction. So as the weight pushes down, as the sacrum pushes down, it, pull, it then pulls on those ligaments and pulls the ilium on either side into the sacrum, strengthening the joint. Let's look at those individual ligaments. All right, here we go. Now, the ligaments directly running between the sacrum and the ilium are very sensibly named as the sacroiliac ligaments. So the sacroiliac ligaments support the sacroiliac joint. Lovely. Um, there are posterior sacroiliac ligaments on either side. There are anterior sacroiliac ligaments on either side, which are reinforcing the synovial capsule. Uh, and then there are ligaments in between. We have the interosseous sacroiliac ligaments. That's a bit of a daft name, interosseous, because ligaments are all interosseous. Anyway, ligaments all run from bone to bone, right? Interos but there are ligaments in the middle here, between the sacrum and the ilium, the interosseous sacroiliac ligaments that are the strongest part of this whole thing. So anterior, interosseous, and posterior sacroiliac ligaments, they're all working together to attach the sacrum to the ilium. Look how many ligaments are around here. The ligaments are a really important part of the pelvis and the sacroiliac joint. And can you imagine how this wedge, if it pulls down, it's gonna pull the ilium on either side inwards. And can you imagine then how there's a little bit of suspension there? Because there's a little bit of movement and ligaments of, you know, they're like ropes, right? Imagine ligaments under tension like a rope. Um, and that's, that's what's happening here. Now, I also said that the sacrum can tilt a little bit, right? Tilt, tilt a little bit anteriorly or posteriorly relative to the ilia. So we need to be able to limit that so it doesn't go too far, right? So because it pivots and because we've got this bit sticking down here, if we were to attach some ropes between the sacrum and these bones down here, that would limit how much it moved, right? And that's exactly what we see. I said the pelvis is made up of three bones, ilium, ischium, and pubis. So the ischium or ischium down here, this is the ischial tuberosity, the lumpy bit that you sit on. And this sticky outy spiny bit is the ischial spine. Now, if you were to run a ligament from the sacrum to the spinous process or a ligament from the sacrum to the tuberosity, what would you call it? Yeah, so this ligament is the sacrotuberous ligament running from the sacrum and the coccyx to the ischial tuberosity and this is the sacrospinous ligament running from the ischial spine to the sacrum and the coccyx. Two very very strong ligaments. Can you, can you imagine how these, if the sacrum is there, can you imagine how they limit tilting of the sacrum? 
sacrotuberous, sacrospinous. The other thing, if we're talking about pelvis anatomy, is that now we've made some nice holes. This is the greater sciatic foramen. This is the lesser sciatic foramen. Very important for us when we're thinking about where nerves and blood vessels go. But sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligaments are part of the sacroiliac joint function, really. So these sacroiliac ligaments obviously hold the joint together, pull the bones together, but the sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligaments are also integral to this function. And can you imagine how loading, when you land from a jump, passing like shock loading, passing through the vertebrae, is all kind of managed and dampened a little bit by this lovely arrangement of ropes here. It's, it's very, very neat. So that is the sacroiliac joint. The ligaments are part of that. Um, sacrum, ilium, sacroiliac joint. It's a mixed synovial joint and syndesmosis, a fibrous joint. It moves a little bit, but movement is limited. It's very, very strong and what have you. All right, so clinical bits and bobs, but that's the anatomy. Um, I mentioned pregnancy. So during pregnancy, the hormone relaxing causes um, ligamentous tissues to relax. And that is so that during childbirth, this can all move a little bit which makes it easier to pass that very large head through the birth canal. It doesn't make it easy, but it makes it easier. So that means that um, if, you know, if these hormones relax the ligaments, the function of those ligaments changes. This joint can move more than it should, which can become uncomfortable or painful or even change the nature of a joint with multiple pregnancies. So this is a joint that we consider, you know, with pregnancy, the sacroiliac joint, but lower back pain. All right, so is, is the SI joint a cause of lower back pain? It is, but there are lots of causes of lower back pain. So there are other things you should think about. If there are you know, like nerve signs involved, then remember that the nerves are coming out from between you know, the lumbar vertebrae uh, and what have you. So the, S, the sacroiliac joint doesn't have nerves running through it. If it's a nervous thing, it's probably something else, but the sacroiliac joint is, because it has that synovial part, it's, it's, it's subject to um, arthritis. So pain can be caused by arthritis of this synovial joint, like other synovial joints in the body. Also inflammation. So inflammation here or trauma. And inflammation of these soft tissues around here can be caused by a number of things like, you know, overuse or um, what have you. But um, like with most joints, we talk about the muscles that cross a joint, that move a joint, and there are muscles that cross this joint, but we don't talk about the move in the joint because that's not really what's going on here. It can move a little bit, but muscles aren't actively moving it. But if you have muscles on one side tighter than the other, then they can affect this joint and you know, be a cause of low back pain. So SI joint pain, arthritis, inflammation, trauma, Changes, changes to the joint with pregnancy, that sort of thing. Um, but it's yet another cause of low back pain. But the anatomy of the SI joint, we've covered the anatomy of the sacroiliac joint. I bet they go for lunch now that I've finished. Anyway, that's it. The anatomy of the sacroiliac joint. Uh, see you next week. Sorry about the drilling, but if I didn't get it done now, my week is so packed, it would not be done. In fact, I'm late from, I'm on time for a meeting if I go now. Mm -hmm.